Hello, this is John Canlapos from our office here in Athens, Greece. Very fascinating patient. This is a cornea transplant we did a year and a half ago. The patient is now 52 years old. Very young patient to have such a dense cataract. The graph looks great. It was for advanced keratoconus. Very impressive here. We have one diopter of postoperative astigmatism. That's the reason we haven't removed sutures a year down, a uh, year and a half down the line. You can also see here in several cornea topographies and tomographies reiterating the fact that uh, cornea stigmatism is minimal. This is the anterior segment of CT, very impressive in cornea thickness, epithelial uh, mapping, and the actual edges of the graft. And sign fluke imaging here showing some truncation of that central astigmatism, but very significant cataract. We can see here the left eye of uh, optos peripheral uh, retinal exam, very impressive exam, showing a very blurry fundus vision. We have to employ OCT to delineate the retinal membrane this patient has, but also no other macular pathology. The uh, lens star action length measurements, again, this is the left eye, focus on the left eye, very little topographic astigmatism of the lens star as well. Aerial calculation here, slight myopia, a half uh, adapter, which is our target, gives us a plus 16 lens. And we're gonna go with a plus 16 and a half a slight higher fudge factor, but there's many intricate things I want to share with you in doing phacal intraocular lens implantation, which is a very routine procedure in a cornea transplant patient. Of course, we have to first evaluate cell count, and in this patient was spectacular, over 2,000 cells uh, per centimeter square on an ethereal cell density, a year and a half post-surgery. Here, we're going to remove only the sutures needed in order to place our clear cornea incisions and the reason is the very low astigmatic performance of this graft you're almost timid if you spend a couple of years doing cornea transplants and i assure you i have to remove sutures if you have such great numbers on astigmatism practice has taught us not to chase correcting a patient that's uncorrected uh, 20 uh, 40 or 20 30 because you may end up with eight doctors with astigmatism just removing one suture. So here we're, uh, I'm pulling out the uh, last of the two sutures I'm gonna remove. Very tricky performing a clear cornea incision here because I want to avoid the graft host interface. I want my incision to be purely in the host bed. Uh, and I'm gonna use the same blade but only create a one millimeter paracentesis. Everything else is pretty much straightforward some may say why not use a blue dye here since the cataract is very dense and again this is a 52 year old male it appears that corticosteroid treatment during his keratoconus and uh, contact lens years and uh, a year and a half of uh, treatment with corticosteroids after we perform cornea transplantation has made this lens pretty dense um, and again i'm not using vision blue here because I want to avoid the endothelial toxicity this may have on the donor tissue. So we're going to employ the standard technique, a continuous uh, curvilinear capsorexis here with the utrata forceps. Again, I'm slowing down here. I'm very careful, uh, completing a nice capsorexis about five, five and a half millimeters in diameter. Now, hydrodissection, inner with our phaco probe. I'm using the signature device. I'm all the way up to 60% phaco power here. And you can now appreciate how tough this lens is. This is a very hard lens. This reminds me of an 80-year-old patient I would treat here in our Athens office. We don't see these cataracts in the U.S. anymore. Uh, thank God. So um, uh, we're creating here a central channel. I'm uh, carefully cracking here. Again, these very dense lenses, you have to make sure that even the innermost part of the lens is cracked. And... Um, the key thing here, you can see there's a little prolapse of iris here. Uh, very careful with iris in keratoconic patients, especially the light co color irides like here, the blue-green irides, which are thinner and more malleable. I'm going to use uh, some epinephrine here. You can see how funny epinephrine initially creates meiosis, but then uh, medria medriasis. I'm going to use more viscote and then um, go ahead and... Uh, crack the two uh, hemi meridians in half again with a divide and conquer technique. You can still appreciate the very tough lens here. And um, we opted to use three tubes of viscoat in this patient just to be super, super careful with the cornea endothelium. 
And uh, this is one of the intricacies of treating uh, a post-transplant patient. We picked up the first quadrant. Everything from here on is uh, very straightforward. Uh, we're going to use, uh, in the interim, uh, an extra tube, the third tube that, as I mentioned, of uh, uh, viscode. And uh, here we've removed the, uh, the lens. And we're going to go for the cortex, very careful here with our uh, split aspiration. It's very easy here to grab uh, capsule and pull capsule. The uh, limitation of visualization from the grass host interface is very evident here. Of course, in some patients, it's even more difficult. And uh, as we're removing the remnants of uh, cortex, you can see that there's a little bit of irregularity of the iris. We're going to use here methocellulose, not viscode, to uh, bloat the uh, capsule bag. This is the lens. We use the Arcosoft lens. I still love this lens through all these years for the uh, this moment here, how gently it takes a few seconds to unfold. It gives me the time to center the, the lens, make sure it's in the bag. Of course, this is a non torque lens and I'm gonna orient it horizontally to reduce negative uh, dysphotopsia as I'm using the haptics to reduce that uh, temporal symptom. We're gonna take a little bit of time here, remove the residual viscoelastic. As I mentioned, we use three tubes of visco in this patient and the methocellulose in the end. Uh, very careful in uh, using uh, myco here, acetylcholine to attain meiosis. We're gonna have pylo in this patient, 2% pylo, twice a day for a week. Obviously very careful for urethsovalia syndrome. There's another intricacy in doing cataract surgery in keratoconic patients. You can have the best uh, cataract procedure in the world and end up with a urethsovalia syndrome in a very miserable patient. We're leaking a little bit on our main incision. Again, I mentioned in the beginning that I, I want the incision to be in the host bed, so that limits the the length of the incision. So I'm going to use a mattress, 10 on nylon suture here, embed the knot, do the trick, not change the astigmatic profile in this patient. And this is the patient the day after, 2025 uncorrected. Nothing feels better than this. Uh, thank you so much, so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.